Hello everybody, uh, my name is Scott Murray and uh, this presentation is discussing uh, automotive grade Linux uh, VSS proxy and gateway uh, and the demo that I put together uh, earlier in the year and uh, walking through some of the technology components and the demo itself. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I've been a Linux user and developer since way back in 1994. I've been doing embedded Linux for almost 25 years now. I've been a principal software engineer at Consulco Group for, you know, about 10 years. Uh, and Consulco Group's an embedded Linux consulting company. Uh, and we've had a contract to work on AGL since almost the beginning. Uh, and I've worked on AGL since 2016 at this point. Uh, mostly doing uh, very like a bit of various things, but uh, the focus is a little bit been Yocto project maintenance uh, and a lot of the demo development and integration, and helping with the maintenance of you know various components of the demo systems. Um, this talk is, is like I said, we're gonna kind of overview of what this VSS vehicle signal specification is, uh, the Cooks Eval data broker that we're using uh, to do VSS and its CAN provider. Uh, the, the proxy that we put together for the gateway uh, and the demo itself. And then I'll finish up with some talk of the, the future developments that we could do around this, uh, the, the gateway demo and the and VSS. Uh, so I mentioned it a couple times, uh, vehicle signal specification, VSS. Uh, it's an open source project that's uh, hosted by Covisa. It was originally a joint project between Covisa and the W3C standards organization, uh, which is not as involved these days. It's not really a W3C project anymore. Um, and it is a big component of this common vehicle interface initiative that Covisa has uh, done a bunch of work on around its SDV uh, you know, projects. Um, there's quite a few companies involved, BMW, Volvo, Bosch, uh, Jaguar, Land Rover, Ford, uh, GM actually now a uh, pretty active participant in some of the uh, discussions. Uh, and so interestingly as well, there's uh, been a lot of interest some more on the application side from uh, insurance companies actually because they do a lot of vehicle data collection. Um, there's recently been some discussion about starting uh, standardization with either ISO or SAE, which I suspect that'll be years in the making, but it's you know a good sign for VSS that this is you know now starting. Um, what is it exactly? It's a hierarchical uh, schema of signals. Um, and so you'll see here there's an example. Uh, basically building down from the vehicle to uh, you know, subcomponents, so powertrain, engine speed. Um, this is like, as well, there's examples like vehicle, um, cabin infotainment, and you know, vehicle power, you know, powertrain uh, transmission. So anything you can imagine, this is hierarchy of signals. Um, Traditionally, you know, consuming VSS, you take the schema as a JSON file and software will read that in order to be able to decode signals. Um, but actually in the upstream project, they have a higher level metadata, which is a sort of a form of, of YAML fragments. And there's tools called VSS tools to assemble that scheme like into a working schema. Um, it's currently a version 5.0. Uh, which is only about uh, a couple weeks old at this point. Uh, and it, like I said, this is an open source project. It's all up on GitHub. You can you know, do pull requests if you want to actually try and add a signal or you think a signal needs to change. Uh, there's weekly calls very similar to AGL um, where if you have you know, a feature or a signal you want to you know, engage with the community, you can jump on these calls and, and work with you know, people from some of these different automotive companies. So what does this look like? This is the, the VSpec file, which is what the, the higher level description. So a speed, uh, which would be the vehicle speed in this case, uh, basically it has the, the data type, which is a float, uh, it's a sensor. Uh, and so in DSS, there's either actuators or sensors. And so an actuator is something where you actually are changing you know, a physical, you know, thing in the vehicle. So, um, you know, if you press the accelerator, that's actually like 
would be you know an engine like a percentage acceleration sort of thing where it's actually you're changing actuator that would go out to an ECU that would actually change something um, and so you know this is a schema right like I said it's typically you would use VSS tools and get a JSON file which is what we would do in AGL which I'll discuss a bit later but how do you use it actually uh, so there's you know reference implementation that, that upstream project has but also there's an implementation that we use called the Cook's Eval Data Broker. It's also an open source project. Uh, it's hosted under Eclipse uh, Foundation, and so it's actually up on GitHub under Eclipse Cooksa. Um, the primary developers are Bosch and ETAS uh, folks, uh, but there are you know, contributions from other uh, companies as, in, as well. Um, and so it implements the vehicle signal specification uh, with a gRPC API, which there are other uh, things out there that do different things, like different ways of accessing uh, VSS. Um, and one of which is this VIS vehicle information service. That's actually another standards thing that is a sort of companion project to VSS. But the Bosch implementation uses gRPC uh, because that's, they feel it's a more uh, modern and you know, sophisticated type of IPC. And that's actually been interesting to us in, in AGL because we're interested in gRPC and demoing using that to automotive folks like the AGL members. Um, the other nice benefit that the data broker has is that it actually has an authorization me mechanism for you know what service like what things in a vehicle can access certain signals with the uh, JSON web token, um, and it has. Uh, Python and Go client libraries, uh, pretty good documentation and examples, and there are Python clients that are available from upstream to actually push data through the system. One of which is the CAN provider. Um, it used to be called the DBC feeder. Um, folks might be familiar with DBC as uh, CAN database files. Um, so basically, you know, that was originally pretty obviously what it, you know, it was used in DBC files but they sort of generalized the, the name of it now. Um, so it basically can push CAN data that comes in on a CAN bus into you know, VSS uh, with some configuration to do the mapping, uh, as well as actually go the opposite direction. You can configure a, a, the CAN provider to push out CAN based on VSS signals. Uh, and it does use a DBC file for the, the CAN definitions. Uh, which is convenient because DBC typically, you know, you would use some tools in your production environment from Vector or whoever to manage that. But the DBC format is pretty documented. You can, you know, do whatever you want by hand. Um, since early on, because we're on version one point something, I think, of the CAN provider, um, the CAN output is basically done using annotations to the uh, schema, basically. Um, and so I have, an, I think, an example here. We do this in AGL to configure our demos. So in this case, what we're doing is we actually have a little VSpec file that adds in the extra data to configure the CAN setup. Um, and so if this is an example of the, in the HVAC setup, the driver temperature, and so if you look at our demo out in the uh, the showcase, the HVAC system, the, the driver side temperature, um, basically this is attaching that to this specific CAN signal here. Um, and so there's in our AGL tree, we do have this file here. That's how the demo works. If you want to see how these different pieces go together, you can sort of work through that. Um, so that's very high level. I have previously given some talks with a little more detail on uh, how we use Cookson and stuff. So if you have questions about that, I think I have some links at the end to a couple other presentations. Or if you're really interested in, in VSS, you know, come find me at the booth and we can talk about it some more. Uh, and so this is about our gateway demo. And one of the big pieces of that is this VSS proxy. So what is that? Um, We've had a vehicle to cloud expert group in AGL for a long time, which has you know, had some ups and downs in activity levels. Uh, but for the last few years, uh, AWS has been pretty active. And they, they were very interested in having something to push uh, you know, vehicle data to the cloud. 
Uh, and so, you know, the VSS proxy, basically their sort of requirements are on the space where to, you know, push, you know, specific selected signal data to a cloud service um, and, you know, using MQTT, which is, you know, what a lot of these similar things that people have built do. Uh, interestingly, I had put together a telematics demo, and I think I presented it here with Matt Raniste, a former coworker of mine, about four or five years, like maybe 2018, I think. Uh, and it was very similar where we were reading KN and pushing it to MQTT using the old app framework stuff in, in AGL. So this is a, a, like a modernized version of that. Um, and so there was a strong desire to see this for embedded world uh, back in the you know, spring. Um, and this aligned with work we wanted to do on a gateway demo. Uh, so we started the actual VSS proxy work in, in February, um, work, working with some of the folks at AGL or AWS to you know, define what the MQTT payload should look like um, and actually like nail down the protobuf description that we were going to use and stuff like that. And then I started in March and spent a few weeks actually putting the proxy together. Um, basically, I was knew it wouldn't be too bad because I had existing code to reuse. Uh, so I am able to use the data broker uh, gRPC client code from a few other things we have in AGL, uh, the MQTT code I had previously used for our telematics demo, and that was all in C++, so pretty much meant, you know, the, the path of least resistance was to use C++. Uh, and you know the new stuff was basically the protobufs for our MQTT actual payloads to go up to the cloud. Um, and a lot of the feature sort of direction were actually sort of driven by looking at uh, AWS's uh, Fleetwise uh, Edge IoT client. Uh, it's looking at the docs for that, for how they did, you know, some of the configuration things. And that actually was, interestingly, most of the new code I wrote was basically around configuration file parsing because there's a bunch of configuration for this thing. Uh, the code is up in the uh, AGL Git uh, hosting. So there's the link to the repo. There isn't a lot of code. It's only like 2,500 lines of code or something like that. Um, it basically, right now, it maps one VSS signal update to one MQTT message. The uh, protobuf uh, definition for the payloads for MQTT would allow us to do batching, but right now I haven't coded that up. Um, there's also the like triggering multiple captures from a signal is one thing that the AWS uh, Fleetwise client does that we don't do in, in, in what I've built so far. Um, wasn't really planned for embedded worlds, so we didn't do it. Um, and it is one of the nice to have things. Like if we were to push this further, that's likely something we would do. So I mentioned the configuration. So here's a config file for the proxy. Um, this is a very minimal one. Um, so you can see uh, there's several, this is a YAML file, so it's got several uh, basically chunks. So this top one is to basically configure talking to uh, the Cuxo.val data broker. So our, here's our, you know, basically our authorization token. Uh, we're using uh, TLS to actually have some security on that connection. Uh, then there's MQT configuration, um, and this is extremely minimal. Uh, there's, I think, like 15 <laughs> configuration options for MQTT that you can tweak. Uh, so this basically points at MQTT broker. And then on the actual signal specification, you know, this is basically any vehicle speed signal update is going to get pushed up to the cloud provider. But, so basically, this is, you know, to this MQTT broker. Uh, there's a, a fully documented config file example in the repo. Um, some point I'll actually get my act together and put some documentation into the AGL docs repo, but I'm terrible at that as Walt can <laughs> attest to. Um, but if you're really interested in the proxy, just let me know. And this, you know, we, we put this together to demo that it's, you know, not that hard to do these kinds of things. Uh, but if you are strongly interested in trying to leverage this and, and go somewhere with it, you know, just let us know and we can, we can do more. So this is the proxy, right? So this is our components is VSS and the proxy. So what does the demo look like? Uh, so originally the gateway demo was a little bit of its own thing. Um, and so, we wanted to have a headless CAN gateway because you know, you know, AGL we have infotainment demos, instrument cluster demos, and we had done some ad hoc telematics stuff in the past. 
we want to have something in tree that is buildable. This is a nice headless, you know, ECU-ish like build. Uh, and we were going to use the Renaissance S4 board that came out last fall, uh, but it had some issues around us actually getting can access working with that. So that kind of put it out of scope for embedded world. Um, and you know, I had mentioned this previous Telemax demo. It's you know was similar in some respect, except we want to show multiple CAN buses because it's a gateway device, uh, and it actually show off using the Cooks Eval data broker. Um, and so you know, because we didn't have the ability to use the S4, we basically you know, well, let's do it on another Renaissance board. So we use the Renaissance uh, base, the AGL reference hardware. Um, and you know, and to some degree, that isn't a big deal because, like most of our stuff in AGL, it's somewhat hardware agnostic. We're using the Octo Project. We can build our images for pretty much any of the hardware platforms, and you know, there'd be some configuration changes around what CAM buses to use depending on the hardware. But the image will work on these boards, so it's you know not the end of the world that we couldn't use the S4. Um, so. In our tree, there's now AGL Gateway Demo. It's not a particularly uh, original name. Uh, and what it is is a very small headless Linux distro, so a, you know, a cut down configuration of our AGL distro, no graphics or anything. Uh, and basically that image just boots up, it runs the data broker and the CAN provider that Cooks.val provide. Um, I'm using our virtual the car that we had sort of defined with a, a DBC file, which is, you know, a couple, a dozen, maybe 30 CAN signals, uh, not particularly representative of a real world vehicle, which would have, you know, several hundred CAN signals. But it's, you know, it's up, up in our tree. If you want to see what the DBC file we're using, it's in the repo. Uh, it's available in basically everything after Quillback. Uh, and as well, there's also these AGL pre-configured images, uh, and so there's an AGL gateway demo pre-configured, uh, and those are basically the same configuration that we use at trade shows. So AGL gateway demo pre-configured is what we were running at Embedded World. So if you want to actually see what that setup looks like, we have those, and that's what now we build to take to a trade show. Uh, and so we actually have those for the IVI demos and stuff as well. And so this is the uh, Walt's nice uh, graphic that he has to show how these things go together, which I stole. Um, and so the actual setup was, we have the reference hardware that's the gateway demo. Uh, and there was two CAN buses going in. Uh, one had an R a Raspberry Pi 4 with a CAN hat on it. Uh, running the demo control panel, which is where we have it at the booth actually is the, our test tool basically to push in data. Uh, and as well in the, our full demo setup, we've in the last several years had a steering wheel. Uh, Jan Simone made that a CAN device a couple of years ago. So it's our, uh, one of our other CAN, you know, sort of things we can do. And the HVAC is actually an output basically. It's a CAN device and, and that's a relatively recent thing that Jan Simone set up. Uh, so, you know, basically that one's, you can sort of think is that the demo control panel is basically input, but the other, other CAN bus is basically bi-directional. There's stuff happening in both directions. So those were, you know, basically connected to the two different CAN buses of the reference hardware. Uh, and then basically we were pushing out over Ethernet basically the gRPC updates to the data broker on the IVI instrument cluster board, which is pretty much what we have that in the at the booth. This is like you know the virtualized AGL running both on the same board, and then the other thing coming out of the gateway is the MQTT from the proxy. And at, in the full demo, we were running that up to AWS, uh, and they had set up a nice uh, Grafana setup with like graphing of data. Um, so that's sort of the full stack. And there's a picture here. This is from Embedded World. Uh, so this here is actually the gateway demo running on the reference hardware. This is our full, you know, the green machine set up with the infotainment and the instrument cluster, and this is the you know, steering wheel. And so there's a bunch of cables you can't see well here, but there's basically CAN and Ethernet running across <laughs> between these two uh, tables. And on the left is the demo control panel, and this uh, monitor was showing the uh, 
basically what was being rendered up in, a in AWS. Basically, it's a, a web browser running, putting up the AWS feed. Uh, so this is sort of how the whole demo looked in, in practice. Uh, so the different components here, I mentioned this you know, demo control panel, it's a Raspberry Pi, um, and a can hat. And so the demo image that it was running is actually in tree as well. Um, and so interestingly, we do use in that build uh, the data broker and the cam provider, but in output mode. Because normally if you build that demo control panel, it's set up to do uh, basically uh, VSS updates to another device. But if you build it this way, it's actually putting out CAN. Um, and that was something we required. I put this together specifically for this demo. Uh, and so if you're interested in how to do that, basically to output CAN from VSS, this is a, your sort of a thing to look at as how you put that together. Um, the actual gateway demo I mentioned is, you know, was on the reference hardware. Um, and the, it has a pre-configured image, like I said, and it actually adds a second CAN provider to kind of wire up that second CAN bus. The uh, IVI was pretty much the standard setup, uh, although it's a bit interesting in that in this setup, like a, the regular IVI build, the data broker is running on the, the reference hardware with the IVI. In this build, it's pulled out because it's running on the gateway. Uh, so there's a bunch of configuration file tweaks to sort of accommodate that. Um, and so basically either our plain IVI demo or the KVM demo that's running at the showcase both of those can be built to work with the gateway. So if you're interested in seeing like configuration file tweaks that are required for that, they're all in meta, in meta AGL demo. Um, it's a lot of detail work <laughs> to, to kind of get this stuff all reproducibly buildable, but it's there. Um, just a brief mention, because sometimes we get asked about how you put some of these things together if you want to reproduce our demos. Uh, so for the network setup, uh, basically all our demos are set up to do uh, DHCP, uh, and so basically it pushes the onus as you you know out to a little router or something in the demo setup, and the IVI is expected to be at you know this you know 10.2 address, the instrument cluster if it was a separate board would be at .3, the gateway is .4, and you know, control panel is on that network somewhere as to push data in. Um, in our full setup that we had in a better world, the AWS team uh, basically set us up with their you know, configuration up on uh, AWS for the Grafana. Um, and we haven't reproduced that ourselves yet, but if you're really interested, we can bug, it, uh, bug some AWS folks about what they did. So that's you know, how the gateway demo was put together. I'm actually doing pretty good on time, I think. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the future development and hopefully I'll have some time for questions. Um, so if you had seen my talk at the AMM, which is pretty much the content I just covered, this is some slightly new material. Um, so f right now, um, like I said, VSS 5.0 is relatively new, a couple weeks old. Probably will integrate that relatively soon for the Super Salmon release that's coming in February. Uh, I don't believe there should be any issues because uh, from what I've gathered from the, the weekly calls for VSS, I don't think anything's changed that affects us. Um, there's some future stuff that they talk about. I think next year we might see some, some changes to VSS that might cause us some work, but I think 5.0 is pretty straightforward. Um, there's some work coming from uh, the Cooks.Val folks, uh, the data broker, they're gonna change the gRPC API. And it's actually quite interesting because the changes are coming from folks inside Bosch who are trying to productize, uh, basically using the data broker, and they've gotten into some use cases where they're like, the API, we can come up with situations where the API is insufficient, so they've basically redesigned things a bit. Uh, and some of that is, is driven by uh, the corner cases around using actuators. The new API, I would say, is actually more clear. Uh, it's actually a little more straightforward as how actuators, what you have to do. Um, and it actually is interesting in that it sort of splits things where a something that implements an actuator actually explicitly says, I'm going to handle this signal. Uh, and it's, it should be interesting. Uh, a lot of the stuff we've done with uh, Cooksa.Val uh, and gRPC and AGL, I don't think will be particularly affected by this. Uh, 
and so I hope to get this in for, for the salmon release, um, but they haven't actually pushed, they have a feature branch in their, their GitHub and they haven't pushed it yet, so should be soon. Uh, as well, they've actually added some streaming uh, RPC calls uh, using the gRPC streaming uh, features. And basically that's driven by wanting better performance. So now they can do batch uh, signal updates or uh, batch actu actuations. Uh, and that basically, a lot of the complaints around using gRPC for these kinds of things is that the connection uh, startup time and teardown time is pretty high because it's using HTTP2. And so the goal is to like, you keep these things going and you're doing an RPC that's using the connection continuously. And so you're, it should be more efficient. Uh, and they've started actually doing performance characterization of, of you know, basically the D gRPC use of, of the data broker. So they're very interested in this. It's, it's a good sign. It means that like, you know, Bosch and ETAS are being serious about this project. Um, so like I said, I'll hope to get some of these updates in to use these things. Um, on the proxy, we haven't done very much since Embedded World. And I had mentioned the signal value triggers. It's actually kind of an interesting feature that we are missing. Um, there's a, you know, a couple wrinkles there is defining when to trigger the signal. You just have to sort of decide, well, what, how fancy do you want the configuration for that to be, like, like defining the triggers. Um, I don't think it's a huge effort, um, but so far, you know, AWS have, have gotten a little quiet on us the last few months, so we haven't really jumped in to try and do anything. Um, but it is an interesting thing because then we would have more feature completeness. And you know, if someone came to us and said, well, I, I, you know, I want to see an open source, a non-Amazon controlled thing like FleetWise, well then we have a better story. Um, they also, uh, in the Edge IoT client, have a historical value support, uh, which basically is a signal triggers and it basically captures the state of signals that might, you know, the last value which could have been at any distance, you know, any in the past. Um, and so that's doable. It's, you know, I could imagine ways to, a couple different ways to do this in the, in the proxy. Uh, but so far, you know, and I'm not gonna build that on, unless somebody is really interested in, in is like we wanna use the proxy or we wanna see an example. Uh, but, you know, talk to me if you're really keen. Um, and, uh, you know, also Patch is welcome if someone wants to, to hack on this thing. Um, the gateway demo, I mean, we still have aspirations of, of getting it going on the S4 board. Um, if we, you know, set it up for a better world next year, don't be surprised if we're doing it with an S4. Um, we do have the, the hooks now, hopefully, to get the can, can working. Um, and like I mentioned, the AWS had given us the ingress and Grafana setup. Um, and so that was, you know, basically reliant on AWS giving us logins and, you know, setting up the accounts and stuff. Um, which, you know, it's not super convenient. If we want to do an ad hoc demo, we'd like to be able to set it up and not have to worry about going and, you know, refreshing accounts or whatever on AWS. Uh, so it's, it's perfectly feasible to build a much simpler dashboard um, and just, you know, we run Mosquito on a laptop and use like Node-RED, which is a pretty convenient tool to do a MQT, MQTT like, uh, a dashboard. I had done that in the past for my old telematics demo. Uh, so that's something that still might happen. Like if we end up in a better world next year, I might put this together for that. It's not, not a huge effort really. Um, as well, the control panel. Um, so we have done a bunch of work on the control panel this year. Our GSOC student has done a bunch of work, um, but in, in sort of different directions. Uh, but specifically for this demo, uh, we would probably do uh, Maybe we work how the CAM provider works. Uh, I basically had to patch the CAM provider a little bit. Um, upstream, very reasonably, they have a good reason why. They don't want the CAM provider to send sensor updates out. It was only actuators. Uh, so basically like updating a target value for an actuator. Um, and so ideally I wouldn't have to do <laughs> Like I wouldn't use the CAM provider the way I am, uh, but that would mean writing some code to basically generate CAM messages. And so there is a little bit of synergy. Our GSOC student has done some work in, in the demo control panel this year that uh, 
it kind of would help doing this. So maybe you know after salmon release, uh, before we go into a better world, I might actually try and clean this up as well. Uh, so that's I'm actually doing pretty good on time. Uh, so that's you know future directions we might go. If you have suggestions as well on the proxy, I'm open to the things. Um, so. There's the uh, demo images. I hope these links are still good. We actually recently have changed some of the structure in the docs page, and I forgot to check these. Um, the uh, presentation link should be good. This is uh, a bit more in depth about how we use Cooks of Al and AGL, like I mentioned at the beginning. There's a couple of other presentations there. Um, so that's you know that's my talk. If you have uh, any questions, we actually do have a few minutes. So. Maybe. Any generic VSS questions or about the, the gateway demo? Oh, Walt's got a question. If no one else has a question. Anybody else has a question? Um, so just, just kind of a, can, you have a bunch of um, like nice to do things like in the future. Could we possibly like document those? As and, tickets? As tickets. Uh, sure. And because I'd like to, I'd like to, you know, we, we get asked occasionally, somebody will come in and say, hey, what? I'm just starting out, I'm looking for something to do. Mm -hmm. Some of those tasks might be okay for yeah. just coming down the Yeah, the, the proxy is pretty good because like I said, it's not much code, right. really. Well, that's why it, it's, and, and, and you know, you really only need to know relatively straightforward C++ because I'm not a super hardcore C++ developer, so it's pretty simple C++. So. Then we can slap a label on it, like it, yes. summer or something yeah. like that. So I can find them. Yeah, so that's a very good question, and uh, keep reminding me. I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember right after the talk, I'll try and open some. Uh, but yeah, it's possible I won't fully cover it off, but that's good. Anybody else? Well, I guess not. All right, well, thank you very much, and uh, have a good afternoon. <laughs>